All right, hopefully you've already read 6.3 and 6.4, uh, entitled Probability, Experiments, Sample Spaces, and Events. Uh, if you haven't, you'll probably want to go read those first, because this is intended to add on to your understanding, not to give you the full idea. A couple of terms you've already got then would be outcome, which is just each possibility. Uh, an event, which is if you've got a collection of outcomes that might happen, uh, like on one trial, that's the event that we're talking about. And uh, sample space, that's all possible outcomes that could happen. So let's dive into this. Uh, in, in this case, uh, for a six-sided die, the sample space is given as uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Yeah, that seems pretty straightforward. Uh, in this outcome, or in this case, the outcome is the result after you throw the die once. So what's the possibility of getting a five if you do this? Well, the possibility, the probability of getting each one, it's, I mean, this is pretty simple. This is just, there's a, it's one sixth, right, of, of getting a five. Same thing would happen if I did a three, it would just be one sixth. So what we could do is we could ask a different thing. Uh, what about, what about, that's actually a really interesting question. So if to get a four or higher, I could get a, a four, a five, or a six. That's three possibilities at a six. I mean, I guess it would be one sixth plus one sixth plus one sixth. It's three six. So uh, that means altogether I get a 50% chance of getting four or higher. Okay, that's not so bad. So let's take a look at another example. For rolling, a, uh, rolling two six-sided dice, we want to get the event gets a sum of five. This is a little bit trickier because there's lots of different ways that we could do this. Our possible events are, it might be, let's see, the first die could be, well, I guess I have two possible things to think about. I could get a one and a four, a two and a three. Oh, and I've got to think about each die. So I could get a three and a two, and that's a different thing. And a four and a one. That's the only possible ways to do it. There are so there are four different outcomes that lead to a sum of five. Well, how many outcomes are there in this sample space? Like what what all could we do? If we roll two dice, I could get a one one. I could get a one two. I could get a one three. This is gonna take a long time if I do it this way. I could also think of this as uh, the trees. If I roll one and then roll after that. Okay, so I get, uh, oh, I guess I could organize it this way. There's six possible outcomes on the first die and six possible outcomes on the second die. So there's 36 possible outcomes. There's a little side uh, discussion that I'd like to make sure that we take a look at before we go too far past this. Uh, there's a couple of things that we want to make sure we've got. We can do... Um, if you compare things, you can either do a less than, an equals, or a greater. We could also talk about a less than, or equals, or greater than, or equals, which is really just a compound. Uh, you've taken two of these, like I took this one and this one, to make this guy. So we could talk about possible outcomes like x is less than 5. Or I could have x is equal to 5 or I could have x is greater than 5. Those are outcomes that I could be talking about. Could also talk about x is less than or equal to 5. Could do x is greater than or equal to 5. And there's one other outcome that I really want to make sure that we get our heads around. That is, what happens if x is between 4 and 6? So I'm just going to make sure that we've got this down. This literally says x is between 4 and six. Now math is a really, really good job of organizing things to be lazy. In this case, this is always the small one. This is always the big one. Okay. And my variable goes right in between. Now, I hope that is pretty clear because we're going to be using this all the time. So sometimes we're going to have an exactly, sometimes we're going to have greater than or less than, sometimes we're going to have between. Let's clean this up. Let's just talk about a coin. Coins are pretty simple, right? Everybody likes a coin. Uh, so let's look at uh, flipping a coin three times. What is the sample space? Oh, this is this is kind of a hard thing to uh, to write out, isn't it? So uh, bear with me. 
and make sure that you copy this yourself. We're gonna flip a coin three times. We're gonna have a first, we're gonna have a second, and we're gonna have a third. But we could take a look at this sample space and we could say, well, this is three heads and zero tails. And that's two heads and one tail. I bet you can sort the rest of these out. Overall, we get eight outcomes. There's something that might be exciting when you look at this. There are so many wonderful ways that we can take uh, a simple situation like flipping a coin and end up with multiple different possibilities. Okay, the world is a very complicated place. And in fact, let's take a look at some examples of this. Here's a, a question. What's the probability of getting exactly two heads? Not, uh, not uh, two or more, but exactly two heads. So you flip a coin three times, and I've got one cho choice here, here, and here. So I've got three possible ways of getting this. And how many overall outcomes are there? Well, there's eight. So this is the probability of getting exactly two heads. That's two heads, one tail. What's the probability of getting at least two heads? Well, so I can say all of those two heads work, but I'm also allowed to say three heads because that's at least two. So uh, I count four out of the eight ways. So that's two heads, one tail, or I could take three heads, one tail. So I get uh, exactly one half of the time you're going to get at least two heads flipping three coins. So what's the probability of getting at most two heads? Okay, think about this. I can say at most two heads. Uh, so zero heads works, one head works, and two heads also works at most two heads. So going through my list, I have zero, one, two, and two. In fact, that's, that's most of them, isn't it? So I count seven out of the eight possibilities. Now here's a thought question to let you think about at the end. Would rolling three six-sided dice have the same probabilities as one 18-sided dice? So if you think about this, you could roll three times, and there's six, it's a, a six-sided dice. Or you could roll one 18-sided dice. That means, I mean, the highest if you add them up on the six-sided dice is 18. On the one 18-sided die, you could have at most 18. But are they the same sample space? Is the outcomes overall going to be the same? Think about it. You should have a pretty good answer to this. And it's going to be related to the homework. I hope this helps out.